we're in this constant state of comparison all the time. Oh, well, that person looks better than me. That person has more money than me. Okay, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to work towards that goal, and that's a positive thing. Uh, no, not necessarily. Working towards a goal doesn't... And also another thing I found is with goal setting is sometimes you'll go to the nth degree to meet that goal, and that sometimes means doing very unhealthy things that aren't exactly things you would reflect upon being positive or healthy in the present. Well, my favorite goal setting exercise is something I call the one-page miracle. On one piece of paper or one computer file, write out what you want, but do it in a very specific way. What do you want your relationships, in your work, in your money, in your physical, emotional, and spiritual health? What do you want? And then you ask yourself, is my behavior getting me what I want in a balanced way? Because people get burned out when it's all about work, when it's all about money, or when it's all about their health, or all about dating without rounding themselves in what we call the four circles of health. Um, you know, gotta get your biology right, your body right, gotta get your mind right, your relationships right, and your deepest sense of meaning and purpose. So it's always in these four circles. And I've been doing this a long time. I've been a psychiatrist 40 years, and I've never been burned out. And I think it's that exercise, what do I want? And it keeps me balanced, even though, you know, I mean, as a psychiatrist, I'm dealing with hard things a lot. But I don't believe every stupid thing I think. I put a link down below for Thrive Market. I know this is a relevant pitch for them, but at the same time, it makes sense. There's a 30% off discount link down below. Thrive Market is an online membership-based grocery store, and it literally is their mission to make healthier food more available for people in areas that cannot get healthier food. They really wanted to make sustainability a real thing and be able to get real good, unprocessed, and even healthier processed food options into people's hands. So that link down below is a 30% off discount link for whatever you choose. You can fill up your grocery cart using that link, 30% off plus a free $60 gift. So 30% off whether you choose some beet chips or whether you choose Siete tortilla chips instead of regular corn chips, or if you want jerky snacks or this or that. And a lot of the times it's gonna be much, much cheaper than you would find at many grocery stores. So that link is down below. It's in the top line of the description underneath this video. And again, 30% off and a free $60 gift. Oh, that is powerful. That is really powerful because I feel like burnout, I don't know what's gonna be in store for the younger generation when it seems as though there's a lot less of that rounding all those corners, uh, just because there's so much emotional stock put in things that are just superficial or, or beyond superficial. I mean, social media, I would almost say it's beyond superficial. It's almost non it's not real. It's, it's one thing to say, hey, I wanna look a certain way. It's another thing to say, hey, I wanna look like this fictional character on my social media feed. Um, so I definitely get concerned about that. However, there's a worry right there, right? What's number five? Well, you know, I often, you know, if we talk about the fifth bad habit, it's inappropriate anxiety. So, and inappropriate anxiety can be too much or too little. Um, fascinating study from Stanford. They looked at 1,542 10-year-old children in 1921. And then Lewis Terman, who started this study, followed them. And then after he died, other researchers followed them for 90 years, looking at what goes with success, health, and longevity. And it wasn't happiness. And it wasn't don't worry. In fact, the don't worry, be happy people died the earliest from accidents and preventable illnesses. The people who lived the longest were conscientious. They said they were gonna show up. They showed up on time, consistently, predictably. They lived the longest. So you need some anxiety, like there may be traffic on the freeway, so I'm gonna leave a little bit early. Um, too much obviously is bad, but too little it's not good either. I tell my patients, think of anxiety on a, like a speedometer on a scale of zero to 100. I want you at about 20. 
and I want you predicting what could go wrong and then making plans. Like if you travel a lot, it's like I, I treat a lot of people who travel, they go, well, I can't eat. Right. Because some airports have bad food. I'm like, well, why don't you just take food with you? Right. You have access to virtually anything tomorrow, <laughs> you know, today or tomorrow with Amazon. Um, why don't you take stuff? And they like hadn't thought ahead to manage the obstacles that come in their way. That's a powerful way to put that. And you know, I, I could be put under the microscope with what I do as being, oh, Thomas, you're, you're preaching orthorexic tendencies by, by talking so much about food and health. And I think those that watched my channel for a long time know that I'm trying to give lots of tools in the toolbox and options so that people can make those concerted efforts to make good conscientious decisions not to give them a, a playbook to follow every step of the way, but something that says, hey, like, if you have that knowledge, then you can make those proper choices. And you don't have to make 100% of those choices today, but maybe you now have 100 tools in your toolbox and maybe you can choose five of them that you wouldn't have chosen otherwise. But the closer to 100, the healthier you're gonna be. So I'm, I'm like not a everything in moderation. I think everything in moderation is the gateway thought to hell. Because hmm. it means you're coming up with a reason why you're going to cheat. I love that. It's like, no. Do I, and the other thing I love saying is I only want to love food that loves me back. That you're in a relationship with food. And why would you choose to eat something that hurts you? Drew Carey, who ended up losing a lot of weight, the famous comedian, said eating crappy food isn't a reward. It's a punishment. And so I think we have this completely messed up relationship with food in this country. Um, that the profiteers yes. are winning, and as a society, we're sick. We're losing. 72% of Americans are overweight. That's scandalous. 42% are obese. This is not okay. I published three studies that said as your weight goes up, the size and function of your brain goes down. That should scare the fat off anyone. If you wanna keep your brain healthy or rescue it, you have to prevent or treat the 11 major risk factors. If you're overweight, you automatically have seven of them. That's powerful. And yet we get scared into a corner sometimes uh, with the pressures that are put on us. And I can speak it from a content creator perspective where you know, if you, if you tell someone, hey, here's, here's some guidelines on how to eat, it can be difficult because you are, are threatening a lot of their identity. You're threatening a lot of what makes them feel good, their comfort, their potential coping mechanisms. You're a serious threat to them. And I can speak from my own experience once again, I know I'm saying this a lot in this video, but when I share things that might be good for people to do, and it's a difficult for them, them, thing for them to step into, I am absolutely, there is a visceral response from them because I am perceived as a threat at that point in time because it's not what they want to hear. And the guttural response from so many people is, well, this guy's just an orthorexic, uh, obsessive guy. That's the first time I've heard that term, actually. Orthorexic? orthorexic? Oh, I hear it all the time. Because, I mean, I, I lost 110 pounds. Prior to that, I was anorexic. So I went from anorexic to obese. And then now, yeah, I've got a grip on things, I like to think. And uh, so do I become obsessive? Perhaps, but... Or I become maybe a, we could call it focus. Exactly, because I know what I'm obsessed about, and I'm very focused on what I choose and I'm very focused on sharing it and I'm passionate about it. And people are gonna be unhappy. <laughs> that is true. Right, when you challenge the status quo, their status quo, yeah. they generally don't say thank you. They generally, but you didn't build a community by saying things they wanted to hear. Yeah. You built a community based on what you believe. That is powerful. And I think wasn't Simon Sinek's, people don't, oh, there's a quote when he did the golden circle. They don't buy what you have, they buy what you believe. And if they believe what you believe, they're following you. 
And our channels aren't for everybody, yeah. right? I mean, if you're like a wine connoisseur and you love your wine, odds are you're not following me because I'm gonna irritate you. Yeah. And I'm not gonna change my position on wine is poison because that makes you unhappy. I'm, I want it to make you unhappy. And I want you to change your behavior if you wanna live a long time and have a healthy brain. And if you don't care, well, that's totally on you. I still love you and be helpful. And if you're gonna do something bad, well, maybe you should do everything else right. I'm sort of like my yeah. NFL players. No. I'm like, if you're gonna play, it's bad for your brain. So let's get you in a hyperbaric chamber afterwards. Yep. Let's make sure you're not also smoking pot yep. because, you know, stress is stack. Yep. It's the same, same concept <laughs> with, with the special forces operators I work with. It's the same kind of thing. You know, you love what you do, you're in this situation, but, you know, there's gonna be steps you have to take otherwise. So.